far. We will have a lockdown drill next week. Does everyone remember their their uh, assignment? Yes, sir. What's your assignment? And yes, Jackson, what's your assignment? And put it up. Heavy end down, right? And your assignment? Yep. And I'll be locking uh, Mr. Fritz a lock with the strap and I'll lock with the strap over there and we will be in good shape. Okay. Today we will start chapter two. Two. Kinematics. Kinematics. Study of motion. Study of motion. We'll talk about position. Displacement. Speed. Velocity. And acceleration. Now to talk about the jerk, my favorite. Jerk, Mr. Harvey. Okay, we'll talk about this. There is a German word used in physics quite a bit called Gedunken. Duncan experiment. Anyone familiar with the word deduncan? It means a thought experiment. Something that you cannot really perform, but you can think about. And from that, you can come up with your conclusions of what may happen. Einstein was very famous for key Duncans. What would happen if I traveled at the speed of light? Well, you can't. But he would think about that. If you think about gravity and what it, what it really was, in his mind, he would think about things that he couldn't really test or show to be true or not. G. Duncan, and I cannot come up with spelling right now. Uh, you could look it up probably in a dictionary. G. Duncan uh, online. So right now we're going to perform a G. Duncan experiment. Everybody close their eyes. Relax. Now we're not going to meditate nor fall asleep. Think of yourself on an infinitely large flat plane. Do you see yourself on this infinitely large plane? It goes on forever in all directions. Two minutes pass. Five minutes pass, 10 minutes pass, an hour pass. You open your eyes and you look around. Have I moved? Am I where I started when I closed my eyes an hour ago? Or am I somewhere else? What say you, Dominic? You don't know. Why don't you know? It's too big. What say you, Alex? Why? Oh. 
What about you, Jackson? Well, there's only you. You're the only thing. Yeah, there is that. Well, no, we're on an infinitely large plane. I didn't say anything about Earth. I don't know. So I think most of us think that we are, we can't tell if we have moved or not. Motion needs a plane of reference. A location. Without that, motion has no meaning. I could not move. I could not tell that I moved for all purposes, therefore I did not move. So motion is a fundamental concept in nature because everything is in motion. Earth is spinning, we walk, we ride in our cars, the galaxy is moving, the solar system, there's things in that moving, the solar system is moving. Everything seems to be moving. But we know that because there are reference points. There are locations that we can claim at one time and look again and see that our location has changed relative to things other than that that we're looking at. Makes sense. So, if we're going to talk about motion, we're going to have, have what we call a plane or frame, mostly called a frame of reference. And we start with the simplest. An infinite line that has locations marked off on it. such as this. So I'm here, I'm at A, and now I'm over here at F. I have moved, why? Because I have a frame of reference. I know that. I can look and see that I've gone from here to there, right? Without that line, I have not moved. I don't have a frame of reference. All philosophical. But that's a fundamental concept. You already know that I am moving because you look at the wall. Now you come to a conclusion. Either I'm moving that way or the wall is moving that way. Which one's true, you don't know. But you assume that the wall is anchored, so you think that is my frame of reference, therefore, I must be moving that way. This is later when we talk about relative velocities or relative speed or things like that. Then eventually we get into this, which we've already seen before in honors physics, I would assume. We got our horizontal line marked off, we got our vertical line marked off like this. And now we got a location here, negative three, comma one, and then we got a location here, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, comma, negative one. I start there and I end up here, I look at my frame of reference, which is now a plane, of reference, and I can say that I've moved, right? As a matter of fact, with this in simple algebra one, you can determine how far you've moved, right? You can figure out the distance of that line segment from negative three comma one to 
six comma negative one. And now all I got to do now, you know, a lot of physics going is to add a plot. And I can figure out what my speed was when I moved from the position one to position two. So a frame of reference and a clock and physics starts. A frame of reference and a clock. That's all we need. And we can determine this distance out of the one people. It's the square root of what? Six minus three, all squared, I believe. Right? Plus, is it plus or minus? Um, I think it's plus. It is plus. I think you I know. Know. I think it's plus. Um, yeah, so it's a, the thing we can see in this right here. So this is six minus three, but that's got to be squared, right? Yes. Plus what? Uh, um, so minus one plus one plus one. Square, but won't that be minus uh, one because we need to make this a minus? What have we done? We've dropped down two units. And we got it, yeah. So now we can figure that out. The distance is. Yes, that's true. This is nine, nine, that's 81, right? And this is going to be what? A two square root of that. Equals square root of 80. What? Two squared is four, right? This is going to be square root of 85, whatever that is. Units, correct? Squared. You take the square root of unit squared, you'll get units, and whatever the square root of 85 is. The square root of 85 units. That's how far you have traveled from that point to that point. And the clock. And if it says a minute has elapsed, I've traveled uh, at a speed, a square root of 85 units per minute, right? Per minute. If I add a direction to it, what do I have? If I add the direction to it, what do I have? Velocity. Velocity. If I say I went in this direction, whatever that direction would be, and I could determine that with some trig, I now could say that my speed was in that direction. So now I have a velocity of the square root of 85 units per minute at an angle of or a direction of whatever. We're done. Lots of physics by starting with a Geek Duncan experiment. We need a frame of reference to talk about motion. We need a clock to talk about speed or velocity. Two simple things. This frame of reference plus the clock. Right? Take the clock away. We can talk about position. We cannot talk about speed or velocity. All physics starts with a frame of reference and a clock. I don't care what you want to do in physics. I don't care what you want to do in engineering. It's all based on those two elements. Your book doesn't tell you that, but indeed it is true. You think about it. So we have what are called vectors. At the bell, all the chain required members are to report to multi branches. Again, so chain required members report to multi branches. Thank you. We have scalars. Okay, we'll talk about this later. Okay. Gentlemen, I might set up some kind of team meeting 
for the weekend or next week before the test, okay? So we can get on there and we can discuss whatever our issues may be. Okay, have a great weekend. What is this test going to be on? Just calculus. Uh, it's just going to be like the quiz, except a little bit, yeah, somewhat big. Okay. All calculus. Or All calculus. Yeah. Not on this, no, or not on chapter one either. What's the answer to the uh, family function? I don't hear it. Well, do you remember what it was? Uh, yeah, it would have been sine of x plus c. You've got to have a constant theory of any constant or root of any constant is zero. So it's a family of functions. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to